In this video, I want to talk to you about how do you develop an awareness and control over your speech instrument. Now, to review the videos of this Flow School 3 series, our goal here is to find a sense of belonging and fit into a foreign language environment, and that requires us to cultivate a perspectival situational awareness of knowing what to do at what time, and that is itself based on us knowing what to do, which in this case, in language, I am making movements with my mouth, with my speech instrument. That is the skill in question. And the question then once again is, how do we cultivate and develop the skill? Well, in the context of dance, we develop the skill by capturing it with our eyes, storing it in our mind, and then reproducing it with our bodies. Same thing for guitar. You capture the hand movements of the guitar master with your, with your eyes, store that in your mind, and reproduce them with your hand. But when it comes to speech, we can't rely on our eyes immediately. We have to use more of our ears. And this is where people get tripped up because our hearing patterns are not adapted or fitted to the new environment. So things get blurry and messy and we don't know where to go. So then what happens is we make the wrong movements. We make movements that are similar to our native language. And the, the native speakers can hear that and they'll say, oh, your accent is off. Right, you're mispronouncing that wrong and like okay cool how do I fix it and then no one has an answer like oh no you're just doing it wrong do it like this but I can't do that how do you learn a new movement if you can't even see what that movement is so that's what we're gonna cover here and it's actually not that difficult if you just know the proper way to bridge where you need to get to um, so to give you an example I want you to close your eyes just for a couple seconds, and then create this movement. All right, close your eyes, you ready? Oh. All right, so you should have been able to capture and reproduce that sound, even though if you close your eyes, which I'm sure most of you didn't, then you'd still be able to do it. Why? Because you actually have this capacity to capture with just your ear and reproduce it for those sounds and movements that you're already familiar with. So how do we then um, to use that as a way to develop awareness over our entire speech instrument. So first, you start with what you know already. So for example, most people can make the E sound and they can make the O sound. So what I tell them to do is move your tongue between those two positions. E -u -e -u -e -u. And then once you have that thing, which everyone can do, um, I have you look at yourself in the mirror. You're going to get like a pocket mirror, hold it in your hand, and then look at yourself for the first time while you make that movement. Right? And then you'll start to notice like, oh yeah, my tongue is moving from this back position. That you can see yourself. That's what's going on, right? So you see me do it. You get a mirror, you see yourself do it, and then you start to get this connection between what you're seeing with your eyes and what you're hearing with your ears. And then from there, um, I have you keep doing that movement, but then you don't make any sound with it. So you go e -oo -e. And then now you just have this kinesthetic sense, the sense of uh, movement and position of your body. Um, while you're linking that up with your eyeballs and watching that visual thing. And it could be EU, EU, it could be whatever. It's always different movements I'm gonna have you do with your mouth so you can see that you're moving and make the connection between your vision and your kinesthetic awareness. And then once you have that, then you're gonna close your eyes entirely and then just be aware of just the movement. And I'll give you cues so you can really feel how those different postures of the tongue, positions of the tongue feel in the mouth and be very present to the core because the kinesthetic really is the fundamental layer of, of all of this because that's how you move, right? So once you have that kinesthetic really deeply um, ingrained in your awareness, very well mapped in your conscious landscape, then you can add the audio back into it. E you reinforce that a bunch of times and you're, you're visualizing it in your mouth 
and then hearing it at the same time, like, okay, remembering the image of what it looked like in a mirror in your head. All these things start to integrate all your senses. It's called um, multimodal integration or multisensory integration. It's a major, it's a major um, part. It's a major component of how we make sense of a complex world. We use all of our senses and we kind of see where they converge. And once we integrate all those things, um, then you really have the sound or you have an understanding and awareness of what that sound, what that movement is. And then you do it for the next one and the next one. And then we start looking at how they relate to each other. Where do I need to move to get from sound number one to sound number two, et cetera, et cetera. And we do that and we, we, we map all of it together in a coherent whole using a diagram or a schema, right? And that's the final piece of it is being able to map all your senses, the e u i o e, and then put that to a diagram, right? And the diagram allows you to see how they're all related to each other in the same physical space. So what's that look like? Well, on the left side, we use that to see, for example, vowel, tongue postures, you know, e u is what we just saw right here, e u, and um, those, once again, you see that in your own mouth with your own eyes, and then you look at a diagram and kind of visualize it, and then you start making the connection between that auditory, visual, kinesthetic sensation and this schema that's trying to represent that in an image. Um, and then we use the one on the right side to help you schematically represent um, the different positions of your tongue and your lips when you're making different consonant sounds, right? And then once you have that schema, now you can just go work directly with the schema. So real quickly, let's walk through what are the different parts of our speech instrument that we're gonna develop awareness through by bridging our senses in this way. Well, first we have to do isolations. In order for you to do EU, you have to be able to isolate the different articulators because they've been trained to move at the same time without you realizing that it's two different things you need to decouple. So first we isolate the different articulators. Um, then we go through each one. First, we look at the posture and position of the tongue when making vowel sounds. So that's just me moving my tongue. Right? Then we look at our lips and teeth for both vowels and consonants. For vowels, they create a rounding effect. And for consonants, they can make different consonant sounds. Right? Involving my teeth there as well. Then we have our vocal cords, which are at the top of our windpipe, and that's what actually vibrates and resonates the air to make my voice. So if it's on, zzz, if I turn it off, zzz, 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 all that's happening there is I keep everything else the same, and I'm uh, changing my vocal folds such that they vibrate in one case and they open up and don't vibrate in the other, and then. The velum, or your soft palate, is a soft tissue hanging at the, off the roof of your mouth, which directs airflow through your no nose or through your mouth. So if I block airflow through my nose, I have a, e, u, a, o. But if I relax that soft palate and allow airflow to pass through both my mouth and my nose, I'll get a, e, u, a, o, a, e, u, a, o. And that's relevant for French, Portuguese, and other languages that have what's called nasal vowels. Right? Then we have the location that our tongue is gonna to be placed on our palate. So the hard palate, the roof of our mouth, we have different points we can be touching. Right, those different parts of the roof of our mouth um, will produce different consonant sounds. Uh, and then once we get the roof of our mouth figured out, we can then look at our tongue itself. Even though the tongue is very dexterous and has many points on the tongue, the tip, the blade, the front body, the back body, the root of the tongue, all of these things will feel out as well and become aware at a higher resolution of your tongue. And then finally, um, to produce any sound, air has to actually come out of our lungs, out of our mouths, into the environment for other people's you know, ears to vibrate with the wind part, with the air particles. And in order for that to happen, we need to produce airflow. So that you can develop your own awareness of, you can have a kind of a tactile 
um, touch awareness of what the different airflows of like a say a fricative consonant when air is just passing through a narrow channel with turbulence or you stop the air entirely and then build up and release it these are or redirect it to my nose these are different airflows so on each of these we'll go through each one and you'll get a sense and you'll do that that same mapping we just discussed to become aware of the whole thing and this is how you cultivate your procedural skill because moving forward any sound you need to make in your target language is fundamentally just coordinating and synchronizing these different articulators of your mouth in a very specific and precise way that is the skill you need to learn but in order for you to actually implement that skill you need to be aware of the moving part that's going to be implementing it all right so hope you're excited for that let us expand and shine the spotlight of attention into your mouth and you can become a master of your own mouth.